purpose of Rails to Resilience was to find out about the sustainability initiatives of Portland and the Northwest. But our first stop was the dunes. We even got lost in this amazing landscape. We saw a lot of the geographic features we study in class, like the dunes and longshore drift. Next was the incredibly scenic drive to Cannon Beach. We finally arrived at the beach. We saw more geography features, like the famous Cannon Beach Sea Stacks. Why Portland? What makes Portland so special in terms of sustainability? Like so many cities, Portland grew by replacing nature with pavement, concrete, and steel. But the farther trees, wildlife, and farmland were pushed away, the less habitable our city became. Since then, Portland has made a major push to become the most sustainable city in North America. For example, their mass transit system is very valuable. We took the mass transit everywhere we went, and we could quickly tell it made Portland a very walkable city for pedestrians, and not for cars. Portland is also building a lot of electric car charging stations. They've also created an effective car sharing system. More noticeable than cars was the amount of cyclists on the road. The cyclist community is intentional. For example, this place used to be a highway, and now it looks like this. Portland has also done a lot with green space. For the last 40 years, we've worked to bring nature back into the city so that we can do more with less. This has made Portland one of the most livable cities in North America. Portland has also made a big investment in lead buildings like this with a massive solar panel on top and solar powered garbage compactors to make their city more sustainable. Our next stop was the Nike campus. Nike might seem like an odd choice for a sustainability class to go to, considering their history of exploiting workers and polluting the environment, but they've claimed they've changed, and we went there to ask them about it. There's so much that a big company can do to interact and influence with the world around it, and Nike is doing that Well, for Nike, sustainability thinks even further than that on how are we making all of our products? How are we going to make as many products as we need to for all of the people that need them? And so we think about things like the materials we're using, 
where we're building these products and how we're actually building them. Um, you know, there's lots of different ways to build a shoe. Some ways have proven to be a lot more efficient and a lot more environmentally friendly. This campus purchases 100% renewable energy, mostly from the uh, wind sources. There's huge solar uh, wind farms in uh, Oregon along the Columbia River Gorge. It's a famous windy place. So you go from per pair, a gallon's worth of waste, down to what's a handful. Now when you do that millions and millions of times, you have a more resilient company. Our next stop was Green Furniture Solutions. We paid them a visit and asked their founder what he thought about sustainability. Portland and sustainability is very much a driving force here and people are very aware of it and conscious of it. Where here people actually consciously look for sustainable materials and environmentally friendly products. And so what we try to do is as much as possible it's kind of we do the best we can. 30 years ago, uh, it was more common that things you had to pay more to be sustainable. And you don't have to anymore. And things can even be cheaper, but I think some of it is just being conscious. A lot of sustainability is marketing, so that you're seeing true sustainability, not some marketing gimmick. If we're getting local materials that were salvaged, we're doing it locally, we're not putting anything toxic on it, you know, even though we don't have the third-party certification, at some point common sense has to prevail with that. Next, we stop by at the world-famous Rebuild It Center to ask them what they're doing for the community. And the Rebuilding Center was like too perfect because we were going to take materials that were already our community was paying to throw away and find new homes for them to fund our work. If you have anything that's reusable from a doorknob to an entire building, we'll accept it. Like something is either coming in or going out in the Rebuilding Center on average every 15 minutes. And we've been told it's the largest by volume of any used building material place in North America. We systematically go backwards, removing the cabinets, the molding, the doors, the lighting. Uh, eventually, we peel the walls back to expose all the framing lumber. And what we end up with is 85% of the materials that make up that building, our home, gets reclaimed for reuse. Next, we went to see Mark Lakeman, one of the leaders of Portland's sustainability push, to see what he had to say. So in Portland, we made a proposal to the city council and we said, look, we have the lowest number of outdoor gathering places of all first world nations and the highest rate of violence because we're so isolated from each other. And the city council legalized the transformation of streets unanimously on that day. The places that we live in are created as products for sale. We didn't build them as villages to house our people, to nurture our children. and. This, almost this inevitable collision between people's individual interests and the public unless you somehow um, have a culture of stewardship and, 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 and commonality. A house. With it. So architecture, having, you know, creating this kind of a thing, uh, it just keeps drawing people who want to be part of the community. What do you think about living in this neighborhood? What does sustainability look like? Maybe the Bullock's homestead on Orcas Island could be it. We went there next. We camped out at Bullock's homestead, a place that really walks the walk when it comes to sustainability. They grow and harvest almost all their own food, including chickens and eggs, and have solar panels that are completely off the energy grid. They cook most of their food in a wood-burning cob oven and also have their own reservoir for water. We asked one of their founders what he thought about sustainability. Well, I would say we're not sustainable. We're a lot closer than a lot of people. But because sustainability means into perpetuity for me. as like not an end cap on it. How you want to live and really how you want your grandkids to live. 
in the future. Even if we keep paving everything, our grandkids won't have much of a future, will they? How do we become sustainable? How do we turn the cities we live in into more livable, environmentally friendly places? Part of the answer will be in public transportation, recycling, and companies going green. But also, part of it will be a change in people's minds and how they decide to interact with the natural world. But the first step is to ask these types of questions. Thank mm -hmm. you.